Greetings, fellow Final Fantasy fans. Yesterday was a great day, was it not? Ever Crisis? Still on track? Check. Epic Rebirth trailer? Check. And we're getting it on two discs. Two. And I don't think one is just an installation disc. Not with the way I've been seeing them market it over the last 24 hours. Now, I am aware Remake had both an installation disc and a game disc, but they didn't really seem to market the two-disc aspect the way they are now for Rebirth, which kind of makes me wonder, is this game size so large we will actually need to switch discs halfway through? Like, we used to all the way back when? Because that would certainly be something. We could be looking at a few hundred gigabytes here, or, the thought has crossed my mind, perhaps we get two separate storylines starring different playable characters, like the way Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memory was, a reverse rebirth scenario. A disc for Cloud and a disc for Zack, anyone? Oh, just imagine. Everything they can accomplish with two discs. Maybe one is more of an open world aspect, while the other is a linear sort of conclusion to the game. The possibilities are aplenty. So today, I thought I'd slow down and break down that amazing trailer we just received, since there was so much revealed to us. Yet, despite that, in many cases, we're still left with more questions than answers. So let's try and figure this out together, starting with that earth-shattering opening scene. We start off with Tifa, Barrett, Aerith, and Red 13 all looking pretty banged up. It feels wrong to see most of our favorite characters, minus Cloud, who's conspicuously absent, in this rough shape. In fact, I would go one step further and say, not only are these four characters in rough shape, they are gone, passed on and joined the live stream, departed. This is what I believe happened when our party stepped through the portal in Chapter 18 to face Sephiroth. They entered a different timeline, one where Zack survived his fated encounter with hundreds of those Shinra soldiers and ultimately carried Cloud to safety. After years of wondering, whether Zack was in a different timeline, as to all the others, I think we now finally have our answer. There may have been two separate timelines at one point, but now it appears they've been joined together into one single unified timeline based on the events of the final chapter in FF7 Remake. In this new timeline, it does not look as if our party survived against Sephiroth and the Whispers. The news report tells us a tornado caused all this devastation on the expressway. I'm pretty confident in saying that tornado was the whispers, and to reaffirm this, we only have to look at the quick second frame right before the news report. If we slow down the trailer, one can see very quickly the whispers and the destruction they caused in this timeline. Now, there are likely several different events that took place in this new timeline, so Rebirth will explore all these differences in great detail, starting with the issue of if there are now indeed two clouds. Even though Cloud was not with all the other bodies, he later appears in the trailer in those same robes that all the Sephiroth clones wear. So, the one from this timeline also appears to suffer a terrible fate. Fortunately for us, though, our main party from the first remake game is still intact. They have just entered a new timeline where their other selves did not win the final battle. A new timeline where Zack is still alive. Then, we were treated to four words that I'm sure brought a smile to everyone's face. The unknown journey continues. Those four simple words were so powerful in the fact that they really hammered home the point Rebirth is no longer just this abstract concept. It is a real tangible game, one in whose story could go in any direction. To add to this, Cloud opens the door to the game's open world, as if Square Enix is telling us all, hey, you do not need to be worried about the game being linear. Exploration will be a key feature. As us and Aerith, Embrace this vast green open world. Red 13 is pretty quick in telling us there's still work that needs to be done. 
He mentions how the planet's barely hanging on, which sounds pretty ominous, but is not really surprising, based on the original as well as remake. What is interesting, though, is the conversation shortly thereafter between Tifa and Aerith, our two favorite heroines. Tifa asks about Cloud's whereabouts during the last five years, which is bound to bring up some interesting plot points, especially when she outright says, from her perspective, Cloud was never in Nibelheim five years ago. This is sure to mess with his mind quite a bit more. He already has some form of PTSD, and now he'll be questioning his own memories, which is exactly what Sephiroth wants. Also, of particular note, is the Chocobo command menu. In addition to what you'd expect, like Sprint and Dismount, we have two more abilities in Scent and Scour. I'm sure we can all assume exactly what these two abilities do, but the fact that we have these new abilities, and this newfound freedom while chocobo riding, and that it seems everyone has their own chocobo, really gets me hyped for all the other exploration aspects that the Rebirth trailer has not even revealed yet. Now, I'm sure OG fans will recognize the next scene, where the party is treated to some interesting visuals about the planet and a life stream and how they're all connected. The life stream is essentially the blood coursing through the star's planetary veins, at least according to Bugenhagen. But really, I see no reason to doubt him. This checks out with our prior knowledge. But I cannot wait to see this scene rendered in Rebirth on the PS5. It's bound to look absolutely gorgeous. And fill us in on some lore detail we so desperately need. Now later on, there's a battle between Barret, Red 13, and what appears to be some sort of rock titan. And I'm sure many people noticed this, but we see Red 13 in battle as a party member, which may not be too surprising, but I mean, come on, it's still awesome to see. And his ability, like Cloud has Punisher mode, appears to be called Vengeance mode. Really curious how exactly this will function, but also, did anyone notice those little ticks or charges underneath each character's ability bar? Any thoughts or theories on how those function? That's also appreciated, because what exactly do you think those are? Now, I wonder if it has something to do with synergized attacks, but it's hard to be certain. Then, we are greeted by Elena, the latest and greatest Turk. We're shown her and Rude in a battle against Tifa, Cloud, and Aerith. And while... Elena does seem to pack a bit of a punch. She is no match for what appears to be some sort of trinity or synergized attack by all three. I cannot wait to see all the different combinations of attacks between our party members like we see later in the trailer with Tifa and Aerith, and then with Yuffie and Red 13. She's literally jumping off his back to finish her combo. I was amazed at some of the moves they had our characters pulling off mid-battle. As we approach the end of the trailer, the pace picks up even further, if that was even possible. A form of Sephiroth appears and explains that Genova can peer into the very depths of your soul, becoming those you fear, those you hate, and those you love. I mean, one can hardly blame Yuffie for running when coming into contact with such a being. All this is downright scary when you think about it, and it makes one wonder just what are the limits to Genova's powers. If it can become all those things, it's going to be difficult for our characters to trust what they see, what they experience, as well as whom they love. And Sephiroth seems to hammer home this point when he says to Cloud, you know that I killed her, so who is she? Now, at first glance, I thought he was obviously referring to Aerith, and the trailer was just trying to confuse us by showing us Tifa. But from what I've heard and read, in the Japanese version of the trailer, Sephiroth is specifically talking about Tifa. Which raises even more questions. Is he telling the truth? Is Tifa some sort of imposter? Or is Sephiroth just messing with Cloud's head even more? making him doubt himself so ultimately he will be ripe for more manipulation and hand over that infamous Black Materia 
when the time is right. One thing is certain though, we are down for quite the wild ride. The unknown journey indeed continues, coming our way early in 2024. It may not be a guaranteed winter release, but hey, I think we will all take it. Now we have something to chew over, a trailer to dissect and theorize on. What I want to know though, is all your theories, all your thoughts pertaining to FF7 Rebirth, now that we finally know a little more about the game. Do you feel there's one timeline now, or still two? What did you think of the synergized attacks? Is Tifa some sort of imposter? And what about the two disc system? Will we end up switching them halfway through Rebirth, or is one just simply for installation? Either way, feel free to leave a comment down below. Maybe hit like, share, or subscribe if you want to support the channel. But otherwise, have yourself a great day. May your heart be your guiding key, my friends. Have fun, and happy gaming.